Well, <clears throat> it's an honor and a privilege anytime you sit behind or stand behind this sacred desk because you do speak the oracles of God. Um, it's no laughing matter. It's something serious. Um, just to tag along what Matt said, 11, 12 years ago, whenever it was, um, we, I used to come from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, all the way down to Morgan City, sometimes Homa, and, uh, and preach, give the word, um, pray for people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I believe my favorite subject uh, in the word is uh, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. I believe God has called me to preach it, pray for people, to receive it, and uh, I've seen many, many, many people be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, uh, and God has used me in that area. Um, Amen. There's a lot of misconceptions about the Holy Spirit and how He works, and it's no mystery. It's uh, all in black and white. Um, you know, some people say this, some people say that. You know, there's so many different theories behind it, but really, there's only one true teaching. Amen. And uh, when you understand that and you have that revelation, you can speak it with authority. And uh, so tonight, um, that's what the message is going to be on. It's going to be on the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Uh, but just to coincide with what Brother Matt said, um, I would come down from Baton Rouge and, and I'd sometimes bring this lady with me that would play the guitar and she would sing and, um, and, and we'd, seen, we'd seen people get filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a great, Sabrina was instrumental in it, Robert was instrumental in, in it, a whole bunch of people that are here tonight were instrumental in that movement. Um, I've been telling Robert, we've been discussing for many years now, it just took me a long time to get here. Yeah. But now, finally, I'm, I'm here. I always felt like me and Robert was going to do something together, uh, business-wise, but also ministry. Uh, if people don't know my background, basically me and Robert, where we met, was in prison. You know, uh, unfortunately, you know, there's a stigma, you know, to maybe modern society. But for me and him, it was the best experience that probably could ever happen to us. Number one, he got saved in prison. Number two, God used me mightily while I was in prison. So it's something to preach about and be excited about. And it's not nothing I look back and say, man, that was a horrible time. Because prison to me and Robert was like a Bible college. We had untold hours to sit, read, and pray. And God used that time and built something in both of us. And you know, when I think about Matt, Robert, Sabrina, other ones that are here tonight, the word faithfulness sticks out in my mind. Faithfulness. That's what I, I see. And on that great and mighty day, one day they're going to hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. So what I said all that to say this, I'm, I'm very thankful. It's an honor and a privilege to be here tonight. And uh, let's go into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have this privilege as a body, of a corporate body, to come together in your name, to pray, to seek your face for answers. Lord, you alone know everything, Father God. You know the heart of man. You know the, even the intention of man. Before he even carries it out, you know, Father, what he's about to do. And Father, I just ask that you prepare your people tonight, Father God, for a word from on high, Lord God, a Holy Spirit word. And Father, as I speak your word, I ask that you anoint me to do so. Father, let the ears that hear, let it fall on good ground tonight. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, I'll take uh, for the subject title, The Baptism in the Holy Spirit. I will be deriving it out of Luke chapter 24, verse 49. 
And I'll give you a few seconds to get to that scripture. <clears throat> the word reads, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Now there's two words that really stick out to me in this um, in this in in this um, sentence or this um, what word I'm trying to look for uh, verse 49. The two words is endued and power. Uh, the word endued comes from the Greek word endino, and the word power is used dunamis. These two words, when you break them down, have rich, rich meaning. The word endued means to be closed with, to put on, or to be arrayed in. Uh, the word power, dunamis, means strength, ability, might, and virtue. When you combine these two words together, you have an awesome little message. And what it means to be, uh, it, it has the thought of being clothed with, to be arrayed in, to put on strength, ability, might, and virtue. So this Holy Spirit that we speak of, the, the baptism of it, there's a purpose and a plan. You know, Jesus told his disciples, tarry ye into the city. Uh, until that promise arrives. But yet, don't go out and preach the word. Be silent. Be praying. Wait for this promise. And there was a reason why. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet came in this new dimension. Likewise, when a believer uh, accepts, or when a sinner accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, he is therefore saved. But yet, God's word doesn't really tell us to go out and begin to preach. If we look at Saul, Paul, as an example, Paul, when he got saved, he got immediately baptized with the Holy Spirit, and then he began to preach. As we look at the disciples, Jesus told them to wait until that Holy Spirit came. Why? Because they didn't have the ability, the strength, the power, the might, the boldness to do what God has called us to do or called them to do. <clears throat> A lot of people want to know what are the requirements to being filled with the Holy Spirit? There's really just one to be saved. That's all it requires. Um, some people in the past call the baptism with the Holy Spirit or being filled with the Spirit. There's a ton of different ways you can say it. It all means the same. But they have attributed to a second work of grace. The first, great, uh, the first work would be being saved. The second work would be being filled with the Spirit. Now, when people think about, well, I'm not good enough. You know, it, it, may, it may be good for some, but I'm not good enough to have that happen to me. Um, some people may think, well, I received it at salvation. I got the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot of misconceptions about um, being filled with the Holy Spirit. So hopefully by the time I get through this message, this teaching, that we will debunk a few um, thoughts and we will build to maybe what you have been thinking about. What is the difference between born of the Spirit and being baptized with the Spirit? There are two, essentially there are two different works, but of the same Spirit. One happens at conversion and the other one is sometimes after you say one has a physical and initial evidence that something has is happening while the other one may or may not be seen with the natural eyes. Speaking in tongues is always the initial physical evidence that something is taking place. There's no other physical evidence that uh, throughout the Bible that you can see that 
happens to somebody when they're being filled with the Spirit besides that initial physical evidence of speaking with other tongues. When you're saved, you, sometimes it, you do have an evidence by people weeping, by people being joyful, but sometimes there's no emotion attached to it. So by get somebody coming to the altar and getting back up and going to the, to the pew, you may or may not know if that person's saved. But that's between God and that person and not congregation in that person. However, the way God designed it was to show a physical attribute when a person would be endowed with this power. And that is speaking with other tongues. Too many times people put the emphasis on tongues and not the baptism. While baptism is all an outwardly um, appearance of what's happening on the inside. Just like water baptism. It's a representation of what's, what took place on the, of the inside of the person when he <coughs> converted over from a sinner to a saint. So likewise, when a person is saved and he gets filled with the Holy Spirit... The speaking with other tongues is just the evidence that something took place on the inside. Just like water baptism is something physical that took place that's on the outside. Too many times, like I said, people put their emphasis on speaking in tongues. That's not the emphasis. And that's why a lot of people don't get baptized. Because their emphasis is on speaking in tongues. No, that's... Your faith is in the wrong spot. Your faith is in the wrong spot. It's not going to work that way. So a lot of times, that's, that's the problem. People come up, they get prayed for, and there it's all about the tongues. It's all about the tongues. And many denominations pump that. What I'm telling you tonight, it's all about the baptism. Who is the baptizer? Jesus Amen. is the baptizer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you a story that happened while I was in jail in 2001, many, many years ago. This is before I really knew a whole bunch of the Word of God. I was a baby Christian. The guard comes in and he racks back the cell door and he hollers out, Church call! A number of people come running up to the front to go to church that evening. While in the service, the pastor comes up. I don't remember exactly what he preaches on. Has a good message. At the end of the message, he asked the congregation, if you hadn't accepted Jesus Christ into your life, that he would like to pray for them. A few people come up and he prays for them. The pastor or the preacher, after he finished praying for those individuals, says, okay, he was fixing to dismiss us. And then all of a sudden, it's like God spoke to him and said something. He goes, hang on, hang on, guys, hold up. I can't let y'all leave. I would not be doing God a service if I would not allow you guys to have the opportunity to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And like, man, something just, my whole body started vibrating. I was getting excited. And he goes, y'all just stay. Y'all just stand right where y'all are. <coughs> He goes, I just want, he went through his little saying, it's something like a salvation speech. And he says, whoever wants to be filled, raise your hand. The guy on the side of me raised his hand. The guy over here raised his hand. The guy over there raised his hand. And uh, before I knew anything about the laying on of hands, I just knew what God's word said about it. And... He begins to pray. 
Lord, fill these people. Lord, your word says. And he went on and on and on. And uh, everybody at that particular point was raising their hands to the Lord. And the God, the Lord says, stop what you're doing. Look to your right. And when I did, I saw this older gentleman. At that time, I was maybe 30 years old. He was 45, 50. He says, look at him. He was like a five-year-old kid. Like, I want that toy. I want that toy. I've got to have that toy. I want that toy. Mm -hmm. And man, he goes, that's what my word says. When you seek me like that, when you ask like that, childlike faith, Amen. that's when the word comes alive. And he says, now touch his hand. And man, when I touched him, it hit me and him together at the same time. And the power of God moved all over him and he began to speak in other tongues. And it was the most powerful thing I ever, that was the most powerful thing I experienced up until that time. Powerful. Powerful move of God. But the point of all of this, he was like a kid. He was like a child. Man, let me just have that toy. Please, let me just have that toy. You know? And God honors that. Let me tell you something. God honors that kind of faith. When you get to that point, and you're like a kid wanting that toy or whatever, that piece of candy, and you're saying, Father, give it to me. That's when he says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and I'll open that door. That's when those things begin to happen. Too many times we got our eyes on fleshly things. We're asking for money. We're asking for riches. We're asking Amen. for the wrong stuff. Amen. I'm guilty. I sit here and tell you tonight I'm guilty. I'm seeking for his spirit now. I'm seeking for his presence now. I'm seeking for a move of God now. And that's where we have to be, church. That's where we have to be. If we want to see a move of God, we have to get like a child. Amen. Listen, we're not coming here on Friday nights just to click our heels together. We're coming here because we're believing. We're believing God's fixing to fill this church. We're Amen. believing for salvations. We're believing that some people's fixing to come in here and get saved and get filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what we're believing for. And by God, God honors that. God honors that kind of faith. Amen. In Luke eleven thirteen, it goes into a narrative where it says, talking about a father and a son, saying, you know, if a, if a son asks for a fish, will the father give him a scorpion? Or if he asks for a piece of bread, will he in turn give him a stone? Your father, your, your, your natural father, being evil because of the fall, he knows how to give good gifts. He wouldn't give that to his child. He wouldn't give those type of things to his child. But the heavenly father, who has everything at his disposal, if you ask him for the Holy Spirit, how much more will he not give him to you? If your earthly father, who being evil by nature, can give good things, how much more your heavenly father wants to give you the Holy Spirit? The problem is we're not asking. We're not asking. What are the benefits of being filled with the Spirit? There's several benefits. Um, the, the, the one that comes to my mind, the greatest, <coughs> is to be a witness throughout the world. To have that boldness to be able to go at your work, at your job site, wherever you're at, and say, hey guys, let's, let's, let's pray together. <coughs> You know, they, with them taking prayer out of school and taking and, 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 and <clears throat> making this nation the way it is with, with just 
reducing, reducing the Bible as much as they can to get it out the way. Um, how much more we as Christians need to come together at the workplace, at the restaurants, wherever we are, come together and pray mm -hmm. and say, Lord, we put you in this battle. You know, when, when we as a corporate body of Christ come together and repent of our wrong direction and get on our knees, then God will hear from heaven and answer us. But we have to turn away from that wicked way. We have to do what's right in the eyes of God so that God can hear us. The second thing, uh, if you turn to Isaiah 28, 11 and 12, the word says, with, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people, <clears throat> to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Think about that for a moment. Yet they would not hear. You know why? Because they want to hear the psychologist. They want to hear this counselor. They want to put them on a pill. A pill is not the answer, my friend. A psychologist is not the answer. That's right. The answer is in this book. Amen. This, the answer is getting in your prayer closet and praying in the spirit and asking God to help you in this in, in whatever you're going through. It's not turning to these other things, but it's turning to him. But if you have not that prayer language, then you can't have that refreshing you can't have, it, it, it caused the weary to rest. You're, you're weary, you're burdened, you're, you're the world, you're oppressed, you're depressed, you all the presses, <laughs> you know, and you don't know how to get out of it. I'm telling you tonight, there's a way. There is a way. Amen. You get in your closet. And you, add, and you go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm giving this to you. And you begin to speak that heavenly language that he has given you. But that's the only rest that you're going to uh, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. How does he give you rest? Via the Holy Spirit. But if we don't have, if we, if we hadn't experienced it, Hopefully tonight, what I'm trying to do is build a little faith in you. If you hadn't been filled, if, you, it, it, and, and if you've been seeking and it hadn't happened for you, hopefully what I tell you tonight will build some faith and build some courage and you'll come up to this altar and you'll seek his face and surrender to him and you will see if you come up God's, God's, word, God's word is truth. And he honors his word. He says in his word, he watches over his word more than his name. Think about that. He, he says, look, don't take the Lord's name in vain. And he said he watches over this word more than his name. It's more important to him than his name. Amen. What are some common misconceptions about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One is, it's not, it's, it's just for some, it's not for all. You know, you got that, uh, or it was just in Old Testament time, it was just for the disciples. Yeah, that's, yeah, I see all that in, in, in the Bible, but it was just for them, it's for nobody else, that God used the apostles and the prophets, and, but for us today, you know, it, it, it's, it's ceased. Listen, God is moving forward. He wants to work through us, through these gifts, uh, gifts of the Spirit. Another one is, uh, I'm not good enough. This is probably the biggest one of all. A person thinks, well, I've done X, Y, and Z in my past. God's not going to give it to me. 
because last week I said a cuss word. <laughs> you know, he's not going to give it to me. Oh, God, you know, something. But Satan plants that in your mind. He plants that in your mind. The second misconception or the third misconception is when <clears throat> you're up here at the altar and you, it's fixing to happen. It's fixing to, the Spirit of God is moving. Satan will say, oh, you're just making up that. You, 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 you just make, they're making all that stuff up. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't real. You're just hearing that all in your head. Mm -hmm. Listen, mm -hmm. Satan don't want you to receive this. Mm -hmm. right. He's going to tell you everything possible to put a seed of doubt and, and, and stop it. But I'm here to tell you tonight, if you just believe him, if you just believe him, just the size of a mustard seed, it will happen. It will happen. Amen. I know it like I know my name. Amen. Now, so there's there's a, a few things that you need to know um, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's pretty simple. S similar to salvation. Um, just as we have to believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, um, we confess it with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we're saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and we're saved. It's pretty simple. In the same manner, in the same fashion, is the same way we get filled with the Holy Spirit. It's just that simple. You know? Um, what takes place is you got to know that Jesus Christ is the <clears throat> baptizer. He, uh, in the Word, he says, John says, uh, you know, I indeed baptize you with water, but there comes one after me whose sandals I'm not worthy to loose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So, Jesus is the baptizer. There's no superstition in with the laying on the hands. You don't have to have laying on the hands. But most of the experiences that we see throughout the Bible is with the laying on the hands. It's not necessary. But Paul does it. The disciples did it. So we do it. Uh, there's been times I've heard accounts and I, I've seen it happen where nobody was there and they got filled with the Holy Spirit. So... The, the focus and faith is not in the laying on the hands either, just as it ain't the faith and focus is not on speaking with other tongues. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the baptizer who, who is Jesus, and it's all about the baptism. When you have that in your mind, then everything else is out the door. And then the, guess what? The Holy Spirit can then work in your life. And he can do what only he can do. The second thing you need to know is that you play a part in being filled with the Holy Spirit. That part is in Acts 2 and 4. When you read that scripture, you will see that the Holy Spirit will give the utterance. But the word says that they begin to speak. You see, out of the innermost being, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's where that's going to start stirring from the inside. Once you start feeling that anointing, it coming upon you. That is the sign to open your mouth and begin to speak what God is saying uh, or what the Holy Spirit is telling you to say. But you have to. It's not going to be so much in your head. Satan will try to be in your head. But when that feeling comes, when you feel that sensation and you feel that rumbling in your, in your belly, you have to release it. And when you release it, out of your belly shall flow rivers of water. A lot of
lot of people get up to the front and they're scared. Well, man, if it doesn't happen to me or for me, they go back to their seat and, in, and they think something's wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with it. It what, And a lot of people say, well, it just wasn't my time. No. Maybe Satan got in your head. Maybe you had a little bit of doubt. There's a number of things that could, could can take place in a split second. Satan is very real just as God is very real. And he is trying to deceive you. He's trying to trick you. He's trying to manipulate you and to not believe in what God's fixing to do for you. Because if you want to be a witness, if you want to have power, if you want to have virtue, then you have to have this experience. You have to. It's essential. You want, the gift of, you want the gift of wisdom. You want the gift of healing. You want any of these nine gifts that the Bible teaches about. Well, guess what? You have to be first spirit-filled. And it doesn't happen. There's a distinction on being born again and being spirit-filled. There's two. There's a dividing line. When... You are saved. The Holy Spirit comes to live in your life. But he doesn't have the full latitude. He, you, look, baptism with the Holy Spirit. That means he's already there. Think about the terminology. He's already there. I'm just about to be immersed in him. Something phenomenal is fixing to happen. Something awesome is fixing to happen. And the Holy Spirit is fixing to do a work inside of you and, and immerse his, his presence all over you. And you'll be, just as you go down into that water, you'll be totally immersed in his presence. God is real tonight. And he wants to, he, he wants to save you. He wants to sanctify you. He wants to fill you. And he wants to ultimately glorify you. Now, in here, just a few minutes, I'm going to ask if you've been seeking the Holy Spirit and if you've been thinking about the Holy Spirit and wanting to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to take this time to pray for you. In just a few minutes, I'm going to ask Mr. Dad to come back up and play something a little soft for us. And while we're doing that, I want a couple believers that's filled with the Holy Spirit to come up here. And we're going to pray for you. We're going to lay hands on you. If you want to be filled, if you want this power, if you want this virtue, uh, if you've been timid in your Christian faith, now is the time to have this Spirit-filled experience and power and uh, availability right here at your fingertips. When I call you, you up, if you would like to be filled, then I encourage anybody who's not to come receive it. It's a free gift. God wants to give it to you. He wants to give you this gift. That is wonderful. That's, it, it, it's the most phenomenal thing that I ever experienced in my Christian walk. And you'll, 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 have, you'll have the ability when you're in a jam that you can go to the Father and begin to pray in your prayer language. And you begin to cultivate that language. Too many times we, we get baptized with the Holy Spirit and then we stop speaking with other tongues. We have that initial experience. It's wonderful. It's mighty. It's powerful. But God... Paul says, I thank God that I speak with tongues more than you all. He's constantly, he's praying in the spirit. He's singing in the spirit. He's, he, 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 why? It, because it's edifying his spirit, man. He's edifying. What that's doing, it's releasing the anxiety. It's releasing the oppression. It's releasing the depression that you go through everyday life. You know, we can only express so many things in English. There's only so many words that we can say, but there's a language that's higher than our intelligence. 
There's a language that is greater than what our knowledge is. And the awesome thing about it is you don't know what you're saying, but God does. <laughs> you know, that's a mystery. It's a mystery. It says great, great is the mystery of God and godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels. This great plan of God, some things is, we, we just don't understand completely. However, people, some people can interpret tongues, but that's for a church setting. Tonight is the initial physical baptism with the evidence of speaking in other tongues.